Hi, I'm Nathaniel Huffman. I'm the editor of The Blue Review, a journal of popular scholarship in the public interest here at Boise State University. This is the first of our TBR talk series, and we're here today with David Walker. He's a military historian at Boise State University. And David, uh, we're going to be talking about guns and gun control today. And since the Sandy Hook shootings last December, um, we've rekindled this discussion in the United States about guns and gun control. For you, this is sort of a disconnect in terms of belief and culture about guns in the country. And I was wondering if you could explain that a little more. Well, yes, I would like to approach trying to explain why this kind of gun control legislation would fail after so many people thought it just couldn't, that we had reached a tipping point, so to speak, in gun control legislation because of that shooting. And why didn't it work, uh, at least so far? Uh, and I think the best way to approach that is to think about it culturally in terms of belief, rather than get into gun control and crime statistics and things like that, which is useful in some ways, but doesn't necessarily explain what appears to be kind of, to some, sort of an irrational thing going on, right? A columnist wrote recently referring to gun control in America, we need to pass sane gun control laws. We need to bring sanity back to our gun control uh, laws. And I don't know what he thought he was implying out there, but there certainly it implies to many in America that if you somehow own weapons that in some way that you're insane. Um, but then again, on the other side, there is, let's say, uh, the other side of this cultural divide, the pro-gun side, if you will, has their own refusal to see certain problems. I mean, that is that they uh, refer to the gun control aspect of this as people trying to take away their constitutional rights and frame it in that way. And that's probably not what's going on. Okay, first we will demonstrate a bolt action rifle and see how fast generally someone may be able to cycle through and fire all five rounds, which I have already loaded into the internal magazine. Five rounds, bolt action rifle. The, the, the pro-gun side has a tendency to use the statement, guns don't kill people, people kill people. And it's said so often that it just, uh, it, it becomes truth to them after a while without any real reflection on what they're saying. It is, as, it is really a flawed logical argument because uh, you could not, if you, if you run that argument forward into its logical conclusion, you could end up saying that uh, uh, nuclear weapons don't kill people, people kill people. So therefore, it's okay to own a nuclear weapon. You know, everybody could have one. Right. Uh, but everyone would say no, because that particular technological device is too dangerous. Well, a gun is a dangerous device. It's a matter of scale. But then again, you know, the uh, gun control side, if you will, has their own flawed arguments uh, that they keep repeating over and over, especially surrounding the, his the history of the Second Amendment and uh, trying to sort of, uh, let's say, a refusal to acknowledge that in the 18th century, when that amendment was put in to the Constitution, it really wasn't a problem uh, for, to, to have an armed populace. It just, it wasn't a problem. And so, instead of advocating that we should just repeal that amendment because it doesn't apply anymore, they try to reinterpret it in, in twisted and it, it's kind of like trying to push the, the round peg into the square hole. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make it fit, trying to pretend that it, it says what it doesn't say. You know? And so it, it is, uh, that's a problem there. And they keep repeating it and saying, oh, it's just for uh, the National Guard to own weapons or something like that. And it's not, it's, it's, very, it's a very ahistorical argument. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of the chief uh, things that the media has gotten wrong in, in the recent discussion about gun control. Well, if we're looking for common sense compromise, this is another reason why we have certain problems. Right? The media is influenced by Hollywood, and Hollywood influences the media, and it's this sort of this little circle that goes on. Um, it, it, some easy examples are, uh, well, for one, the media does not help in trying to understand that there are these cultural differences and, and that there is a talking past each other. 
a lot of our news media is into fostering arguments on television. You know, people yelling at each other. And you know, people have complained about that for a while, uh, it, but apparently it's entertaining for some. So uh, that's that problem altogether. They, they're not really addressing these cultural issues of belief. Uh, the next thing would be that it, it's very easy to see how they, uh, they just are not factually correct about certain little things. And sometimes you could say, it doesn't really matter, because it's just some little thing. But it does help to twist the debate. All these little things add up. And it, it, nothing is more uh, apparent in this way than looking at how they frame this whole thing around assault weapons. And it, in fact, that phrase, assault weapon, doesn't, doesn't really exist in the history and in, in, in the nomenclature of, of weapons technology and weapons history. It, it is sort of a made-up thing uh, to try and classify a weapon that looks like a military weapon, but is not one. It's not a military weapon. Uh, the AR-15 that, took, that was used in the Sandy Hook uh, shooting was a semi-automatic weapon. That is, it, it, it was not a machine gun, and yet uh, it gets all blurred because uh, an assault rifle, which is the proper term for what the military has, they, those are full auto, right? So we have this problem with uh, people thinking about what's a machine gun, what's not a machine gun, what really is an assault rifle. Uh, it, it, for many people, it's just those things that are black that have hand that have a pistol grip. And but Hollywood, again, you know, they have done a number on things as well as just how, how weapons operate, what they can do. Uh, they refer to the AR-15 as a high-powered rifle uh, weapon, and it's not really a high-powered rifle, not if you know the history of weapons, right? World War II weapons, World War II rifles, uh, like the M1 Garand, those are high-powered weapons. Uh, what, what makes them high-powered? They have a lot more powder in the shell. And you could look, if, if you, could, you could compare a, 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 a rifle bullet from World War II to an AR-15 bullet, you'll find that the AR-15 is what we call a medium round. It is uh, bigger than a pistol round, smaller than a rifle round. Uh, uh, and it is a, a traditional rifle round from World War II. And it's a medium round. And it is uh, it, it's not as high powered as people imagine it to be. Okay. Here we have the M1 carbine that uh, people still don't want to call an assault weapon or an assault rifle because this isn't a fully automatic weapon. It is semi-automatic, but uh, it does hold a 30 round magazine. And let's see what it does. Okay, here we have the M4 carbine, or uh, a weapon from the M AR-15 family of weapons, and 30-round magazine, and we'll see what it does. This weapon does the same thing as that M1 carbine did, except it looks meaner, I guess. It's black. Hollywood has simply made it sound as if America is full of machine guns being used by criminals. Uh, at one time, there, this did occur in the 1920s with the uh, Prohibition gangs, uh, but even those gangs actually gave up using the Tommy gun because, and, and, and found it much, much easier to commit their murders with handguns because the, the machine guns attracted so much attention from law enforcement that, you know, even the, the, the criminals decided they didn't want to use those machine guns as much. Is there anything you could envision? I mean, you know, President Obama and Congress, Democrats in Congress have promised to keep bringing back gun control ideas until as long as they can. Uh, is there one thing they could do to address this sort of opposing belief system in our country um, to maybe break some kind of logjam? 
you know, politics is the, you know, it's the interaction of competing goals and each side wants to accomplish its goal, right? So even a compromise is the belief that you somehow got your goal out of this. And uh, so it, it, I can only predict there will be more attempts at gun control and more people will buy guns. That's what I can predict. All right. <laughs> Thank you, David. Uh, this has been a TBR talk. I'm Nathaniel Hoffman with The Blue Review. You can read about uh, more about guns in America at thebluereview.org. And uh, we'll see you at the next TBR talk. Thank you. Thanks, David.